I'm Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello and welcome back to How to Paint Watercolours with me, Colin. And I've chosen a mountain scene for this one. Just to take a break from sunsets. And the only reason why I've, I've been painting so many sunsets is to show you the other side of the... Uh, colour wheel which a lot of landscape painters seem to ignore they do the greys, the blues and the earth coloureds but not the reds and the yellows and also your violets and uh, if you don't use them you're missing out on half half the colour theory leaving a thin film of water on the paper which is uh, 140 pound Saunders Waterford and I'm just removing the excess off the sides with a flat brush and then I want to dry the mountain tops off because I don't want the sky <coughs> to come down over the mountains yeah this is just straightforward turquoise I'm just going to test its strength here and then we're going to give it a light wash I just add some water to that just to bring it uh, down a touch painting around the peaks okay adding water once again just to bring this close towards the center of interest which is this peak here and I want very little color around it this is thalo blue and indigo this in over the top here, bringing it down to meet the other colour, adding a little water to the brush and bringing these together. I just bring this down a little further on this side. <coughs> I want to subdue this side eventually. This is indigo and light red. I really want to get a fair amount of this on to uh, darken the sky. You must remember, being as a thin film of water on the paper, that that will help to thin the paint and this will actually dry a lot lighter. So don't be frightened of putting a good strength of colour on. It is important to get the contrast into your painting between the lights and the darks. Drop some in down here. take a, a little bit of this out just using a, <coughs> an ordinary kitchen towel I don't use toilet tissue for the simple reason is it can leave bits where you don't really want them to be this is indigo light red with a touch of crimson allowing this to come in here softening the edges indigo and light red again but I've moved on to the almost a black scale but it's a, it's a little bit of a grey very dark grey maybe just a little in here as well just for good measure just to really darken this sky and we're trying to create a sense of depth it's a really dark foreboding sky moving into a, a light burst where the mountains are taking a damp brush just softening some of this grey in so there's no hard edges
the board is laying flat for this. Do you need a little bit of spread? And then we're going to leave this to dry. Now that your sky's uh, dried out, I'm just going to run some water into this furthest away mountain peaks and um, we're just going to subdue this with a, a bluey grey. So this is indigo, light red, and I'm just popping this in basically all over this one. It's sort of a flat wash. This wants to be really subdued, so this is why I've not wet it so it can't mix with any water, so it will dry a little bit darker. Just darkening this one just a little bit more. This is a darker, it's a, it's a thicker mixture of the one I've just put on, but I just need it to be darker which is the indigo and the light red. Just some stronger tone in the bottom. It's the same color, but a stronger mixture, indigo and light red. Maybe just a little variation in here. Maybe some in here just to I want this mountain to stand out on the face here so the rest of the mountains that surround it will have to be subdued to get the contrast. And then we have to leave this bit to dry. Clean water onto this section here because I want soft edged shadows on this mountain. Just a little bit of shadow on this side here I think. And I'm leaving some white paper on the front of the mountain to show where the um, light source is hitting. I also want to add a little bit of colour into this side as well and then I'm going to take some turquoise and I'm just going to bring this back to the blue side here. I don't want this strong so I'm just going to test it on this one. I can always wipe it out a little bit. Maybe just a little strong so I'm just going to take that out, spread that up, bring some in here. almost like a stain so you can hardly see it let's get it dark as we come towards this back edge softening off this edge with a damp brush and once again we really do have to leave this to dry once again this is indigo and light red and we're just going to build our mountain up here with some rocks where the snow and the, the shade where the rocks are when you come to do mountains you can actually shape them with the stroke of your brush one or two areas off Always take your brush in the direction that you want your rocks to flow and this will add shape and fall to a flat surface. Bringing 
them in different directions. Strengthening it up slightly. Let's bring it darker into this corner. And now we leave all this to dry. And if you feel that your paper is drying out, to keep it so that it stays stretched, it's just to run some clean water into the area. And this will stop your paper drying out. Okay, we'll finish this section of the mountain off uh, actually when the shadows have dried. And then we'll move on to the sea once we've completed that. Now that this is dry, we can come to the main feature and I'm just once again shaping this with my brush strokes. Then allowing the brush to catch the tooth of the paper just to create some hit and miss effects from the, the brush. allowing to get some texture onto this mountain. I'm the same colour again but I'm just using a darker tone as I'm just adding some of the indigo and light red which is of the thicker mixture so we just bring in a shadow side here and once again using the hit and miss effect Start to add your ridges in. building it nice and slow it's creating plenty of interest and you can see the effect that you're getting on your mountain with a very small amount of paint. Don't get too carried away with this. You um, do want to leave some of the snow showing. But I do want to darken some areas as well to allow the light side of the mountain to stand out, which is what we're really after. Shaping some peaks. Just adding some dark, real dark color. Just a 
little on this. Now with some clean water, re-wet your sea area. So it has a nice film of water on it. And with a little bit of turquoise over the mountain here, we can bring some in. All horizontal strokes. This is turquoise and raw umber. Bring this in. On the bottom here, strengthening it up. Always remembering it will dry a lot lighter. This is cobalt blue and raw umber. For making it a steely blue, grey kind of thing. Begin to add this in. Once again, all horizontal strokes. Then taking some of your sky colour. Let's bring this in as well. This is indigo <coughs> and light red. Just building up the depth. Really making some of these areas lovely and dark. And to help bring your eye into the picture. We will be lifting some paint out just to soften some of the reflection. I'm just going to leave this for five or ten minutes just for the paint to settle and lie flat and then we'll be pull, lifting some paint out um, just to add a tiny little show of reflection of the white off the, off the mountain into the sea. Okay I've left it about ten minutes and as you can see there's still some shine on the paper but it's not as wet as it was and just before it dries out I just want to bring in I want to just say lift out just a little bit of paint. This will backfill slightly. But I don't really mind that. I'll just need to lift it gently out. Okay, and now we leave all this to dry. Now that everything's dry, I've just put uh, a couple of wind streaks in with some white gouache and uh, we're going to get round to the best bit in a minute but I just want to put a, a couple of seagulls in over here I think using the white wash one two Maybe one reeling on its side here. Once you've got that, you get round to the best bit, which is uh, signing it. I've made some other painting videos for YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description box, and if you click on that, it will take you straight to them. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please click the like button and subscribe. All subscribers are welcome, it will cost you nothing. And once again, I'd like to thank you very much for watching.